Court of the Cloud. All right, I think we're recording now. Okay, so I've got multiple screens running here. Um, you guys ought to be able to see my slides there. Mental wellness, yes. Michael, give me a thumbs up if you can see that, the slides up there, beautiful. All right, so tonight what we're gonna talk about is um, this idea of mental wellness and physical health being two sides of the same coin. Um, one of the really cool phenomenons that we're seeing now with Amare after being out, you know, now, so it's May, what is it? It's May 3rd. So we're just barely into the fifth month of our official launch. And, you know, we are, as you can see on the screen, we are a mental wellness company. That is the, that is the tip of the arrow of what we're doing in the world. Um, helping people with, with all the things on the mental wellness continuum which you see here. Uh, and you hear us talk about this a lot, right? So our, our, our mission in the world is to really lead this revolution around getting people to, first of all, think about mental wellness in a completely different way. And, this, and, the, and the new change in science is allowing us to do that. Uh, but then also, once people feel better, they're getting these physical health benefits. So like I was starting to say, five months into our official launch, people are coming in and they're definitely feeling better. Their moods are better, their energy is better, their, their levels of stress and tension are better, their brain fog is lifting, their burnout is going away and it's being replaced with the opposite, which is vigor. Like all these wonderful mental wellness benefits are happening and people are experiencing that. And that's wonderful because that's what we're promising. But what, what we're also seeing, and this is, um, this is a, a, a little bit, I won't say confusing, but it's, it, it's, it's unexpected at least, that people now are also saying, well, this is great, I feel better, but I'm getting all these other, what, what seem like physical health benefits that I didn't expect, you know? And, you know, we joke around sometimes, we say, well, these are just the side benefits that you get, and they are. And I wanna explain why people are getting those, why? is skin getting better? Why are joints getting more limber? Um, why are allergies going away? Why are aches and pains alleviating? Why, why, like, why these physical changes when our promise is, is mental wellness, right? So, so this, is the, this is what we always lead with, this idea of we're a mental wellness company. Uh, but the reason that we're getting so many of these physical health benefits on top of the mental wellness benefits is because of things like, let me see if I can switch it here. There we go. Um, a lot of our changes, a lot of the way that we're modulating these mental wellness benefits are through the microbiome. Um, and people hear us talk about the microbiome and the gut brain axis and things like that. But I want to dig in a little bit and, and, and help people understand why that's a, a, um, an interesting target for mental wellness benefits. And by modulating that target and, and reestablishing balance in that target, the microbiome, why are we also getting these physical health benefits? And it really comes down to you know, two things, um, immune system modulation and inflammatory system modulation, which are both controlled by the microbiome. Okay, so that's, the, that's sort of the moral of the story. And I'm gonna use about 15 or so slides to sort of step people through the, you know, the what's and, and wherefores on, on that whole thing. So think about, think about where most people are right now. Most people are in some sort of microbiome unbalance or imbalance, what we call dysbiosis. And here's a cartoon dis depiction of what those patterns of dysbiosis might look like. So on one level, you could have just a total decline in, in, in beneficial bacteria, right? We could just have not enough good bacteria. We could have too many of the bad bacteria, or we could have an overall low diversity. People ask me sometimes, you know, there's, when we measure microbiome status, we, we, get, we get almost too much data back. Uh, and we try to really simplify that for people. Uh, in fact, one of, the, one of the projects I was working on pre-MRA um, is, to, is to try to really simplify when we analyze these, these 100 million genes that we see in the, in the bacterial genome. It's not really that quite that many, but, you know, 20 million at least. But we get, we get a ton of data. It's almost like getting a whole phone book worth of data, and it's hard to make 
heads or tails of. So putting that data into an algorithm, which is one of the projects I was involved in pre Amare and trying to, and trying to simplify that to show people, you know, you have, you have these species of good bacteria, you have these species of bad bacteria, how they interact with each other, what chemicals each of those species of bacteria um, are producing. Um, but people ask me sometimes like, what's the most important thing? Is it to get more good bacteria? Is it to kill off the bad bacteria? And it actually, the most important thing probably is this. It's probably to get a more diverse garden, a more diverse ecology. That seems to be across the research studies. Diversity seems to be the most important consideration in terms of both your mental wellness and your physical health. And I'll try to give a flavor for that as we go through here. So most people show up with some level of, of bacterial dysbiosis or microbiome dysbiosis. You're out of balance in certain ways, right? But who cares, right? The reason you care about the balance of your bacteria in your gut and really across your whole body, there's a skin microbiome, there's an oral microbiome, there's a lung microbiome, uh, and we can measure all of those in a little bit different ways. But the main reasons that you care about if you're in balance or if you're out of balance in terms of your bacterial profile is because um, the, the, well, the, 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 the problems with being out of balance are these sorts of things. Metabolic syndrome. So that's, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, really your whole, meta your whole energy metabolism is off. That can lead to diseases like diabetes. It can also lead to problems like obesity. It can lead to allergies. It can lead to skin problems. It can lead to type two diabetes. It can lead to a wide variety of different things, some of which we'll talk about later. Um, and how do, we, how do we get here? How do we where is all this dysbiosis coming from? When I say most people come in here with some level of dysbiosis, how, how, can, how can I make a sort of a broad statement like that? And it's because the, the, the things that we're exposed to in the modern world are almost, the, 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 the deck is stacked against us in certain ways in terms of pushing us towards dysbiosis. So um, our, our genes, um, can can have a have an effect on our microbiome. Our microbiome can have an effect on some genes, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. If you've ever had a, even a single course of antibiotics, that can disrupt your microbiome. An unbalanced diet, you know, the standard American diet, eating fast food and processed food and cheeseburgers and Coca-Colas and lots of sugar and things like that, 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 that disrupts the microbiome in certain ways. And then psychological stress. This is one we virtually can't escape from. If you're not getting the right amount of sleep, if you're, you're, you know, you're living in the, in the sort of 24 uh, seven electronic world that we all live in, if you sit in traffic jams, if you believe, breathe polluted air, those are all sources of stress. Even aging in a certain way is a cellular stress on the body. So we really can't escape these constant challenges to the microbiome unless we're actively pushing back against all those various sources of things that could imbalance us. So that's one of the reasons that here at Amare, being a mental wellness company, we do focus so much on the gut and the second brain and the microbiome and the gut brain axis, because that really is in a certain way is the first domino in the chain of events that'll lead us to feeling better or, or, or not feeling better. Um, and it, and it really becomes like, like this, when I say, when I say dominoes game, it's because of the interacting nature of our biochemistry. Um, and because of that interacting nature of our biochemistry that has interaction effects on our psychology and that has interacting effects on our overall health and, 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 and wellness and, and, and longevity even. So, you know, um, I talk about this a lot. This is really what I spend most of my scientific career studying. This idea of how lifestyle interventions like nutrition, like stress management, like exercise, like supplementation, like mindfulness, like sleep, you know, those sorts of lifestyle choices or lifestyle interventions, how they affect biochemistry. So how they will affect your thyroid hormones or your stress hormones, how that will affect your cytokines, which are inflammatory um, 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 compounds, how that will affect your immune system modulation and your risk for 
suppressed immune system and upper respiratory tract infections or overactive immune system and allergies and autoimmune diseases and how all of that interacts with the nervous system, which is, you know, not just the nerves throughout your peripheral nervous system, but your brain in your central nervous system. And then how, how the interactions there manifest themselves as anxiety and depression and insomnia. So it's wonderfully exciting. I love to study this area because it's, it's interesting. One of the most interesting pieces is that there's so many parts to it, but the most interesting piece is that once you modulate one, one area, once you, once you push on one area with imbalance or balance, it sends an imbalance or balance signal to the other area. You can see all of these, air, all these arrows are, are bi-directional, meaning that if you change something in the immune system, you're going to change something in, in the endocrine system, and that's going to change something in the nervous system, et cetera, et cetera. So it's wonderfully exciting to actually go in and see what these modulations will do. What does a mindfulness program do in the nervous system that can give us a direct effect on anxiety, and then how does that give us a secondary effect on our immune system modulation? How does something in the endocrine system System, a modulation of your cortisol levels, for example, how does that change your immune system and how does that change your stress profiles, etc. So it's wonderful to study. It can be really, really frustrating to deal with any of these areas because once you have a problem like here, let's say somebody comes in, here's about Amare up here on the nervous system side. They're struggling with some level of anxiety or depression or insomnia, like, like, like we all do, right? We're all somewhere on that mental wellness continuum. So we come in, that person comes in, they get a certain, you know, Amari intervention, uh, our fundamentals program, for example. They take our fundamentals pack, and that's our gut brain axis modulation. Their, their, their mood improves, their stress levels improve, their relaxation at night and their sleep quality improves, all from that gut brain axis intervention. But, and, and that's awesome, right? That is wonderful that they got those benefits. But what is also happening with those people is that they're also getting benefits through this entire cascade. Now their immune system is regulated better. It's, it's, a, it's an effect that we call immune system priming. So now they're getting benefits across these sort of areas. They're getting benefits in terms of their overall inflammatory cascade. So now their shoulder doesn't hurt. So now their joints aren't as achy. So now their back isn't as, 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 as sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, yelling at them all the time. They're also getting benefits through their endocrine system. So now their metabolism is better. So now, you know, we have, we have thousands of people across the country now saying, Oh my gosh, I got on the fundamentals pack and my mood improved and my joints got, got looser and my skin improved and I lost some weight. What's going on there? Well, what's going on there is this cascade is now being normalized. So the thing that can be so frustrating when you're out of balance in any of those areas is that out of balance in the endocrine system can cause out of balance in the immune system. And that can cause out of balance in the nervous system. So you end up having one problem that causes this ripple effect of problems throughout the entire body. And the frustrating piece is that people will come in and, and have all these you know, problems that look like they're unrelated to each other, but they're actually perfectly related to each other when we look at the underlying biochemistry. So typically their, their approach to fixing those problems, you know, looking for relief is to say, well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm gaining weight, my metabolism is, is out of whack, I'm gonna do something there. But if they're not also doing something in each of those other areas, they're not going to get the benefits that they're looking for. That's one of the reasons that our fundamentals pack is so effective because it really does modulate many of these pathways, about eight different um, target pathways across those three products in that one pack. So it's, it's really doing a lot. So it's it, wonderful to study, frustrating to be, battling it when you're when you're in the imbalance phase but wonderful again when you start to rebalance because the same exact concept happens on the rebalancing phase once you restore balance in one of those areas you'll start to see balance in the next area and balance in the next area and that just becomes synergistic if you can apply balancing effects simultaneously in those areas and that's exactly why fundamentals is formulated the way that it is. So let's dig a little bit deeper into what's going on here, right? We think about these different 
places that could be imbalanced. We could have an imbalance in our microbiome, that, that kind of dysbiosis that I started off with, which could cause problems with neurotransmitters, which could cause problems with the immune system, problems with inflammation, problems with what our thought patterns are, you know, and then we get into that sort of rumination of stress leads to more stress, leads to bad moods, leads to more bad moods, leads to tension, leads to anxiety, leads to poor sleep, leads to fatigue, leads to, you can see where that goes. And what I just did there, I just described many of the people who are on the call tonight. I just described the situation that even if we're not in that situation all the time, many of us find our, ourselves in that situation often and sometimes more often than 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 not so you know you can see where this this you know is a is a very vicious cycle and again we see those bi-directional arrows we see the fact that these go back and forth it's not just one direction you know when we say vicious cycle a lot of times we do this kind of thing but it really is a vicious cycle that's going every which way which again makes it very challenging to really get a handle on unless you come at it in a very coordinated way which is which which is exactly what Amari is all about, being the first company to really come at this problem in a comprehensive, holistic way. So um, how is that happening, right? When we, when we look, it's, you know, it's one thing to draw a cartoon of it and say, you know, here's your microbiome and your neurotransmitters and your stressors and your inflammation and things like that. But what's actually going on there? What, what are these signals that are going back and forth? When we look at this microbiome gut brain connection, um, there really is a lot going, going on both ways. So um, I, I want to give you a flavor for what actually are those signals. So if we're, if we start down in the gut. What the gut is producing is a variety of bioactive compounds that have signaling effects throughout the rest of the body. So that's really why we want to we want to optimize the, the ecology of your gut because when we say good bacteria versus bad bacteria, what we're really talking about is the reason these guys are good is because they're producing the chemical signals that we want to be sent out through the rest of the body. And the reason that these guys are bad is because they're either interfering with these good signals or they're producing their own set of bad signals, sort of, in, you know, inflammatory signals and, and things like that. So look at, some of the, look at some of the chemical signals that are being sent from the bacteria up to the brain. And, and th th this up to the brain is kind of shorthand for out into the body. They have some of their effects in the brain, but they also have some of their effects peripherally with the adrenal system and with the thyroid system and with the immune system and things like that. So short chain fatty acids are one of the key ones. Um, butyrate and um, acetate and propionate and some, some of these, some of these um, compounds that the bacteria produce will be anti-inflammatory on their own. Some of them will be signaling to the immune system. Some of them will be signaling to your adrenal glands, your stress response system. Um, we actually give some butyrate in our Mentasync product. So you're actually supplementing so that you supplement with that signaling molecule on top of what your bacteria are producing. We also want want to give you the bacteria that produce these. And this is one of the reasons we give the specific um, probiotic strains that we give in our mentobiotics product. One of the key ways to get your microbiome here to produce more of these butyrate short chain fatty acids um, is to give them the right food. So prebiotic fibers, um, like you might get from beans, you might get from green leafy vegetables, that you might get from, from oatmeal, that you would get from specific prebiotic fibers like the ones that we give you in Mentabiotics. These are the fuel source that those bacteria will use and will break down and will use those breakdown products to make more of these short chain fatty acids. So there's lots of ways that we can get your microbiome making more of these and more of these are good for lots of things. Anti-inflammatory, like I already said, um, direct metabolic effects. So more short chain fatty acids tend to be associated with leaner body types. Um, so if you get more short chain fatty acids, your metabolism improves, your glucose 
glucose control, your insulin sensitivity improves, so blood sugar levels are better. That means that your fat metabolism is gonna be better. Your appetite levels are gonna be better. Um, your thyroid levels are gonna be better, so your overall metabolism is better. There are lot, lots and lots of good reasons for, for us to want more of these kinds of signals. Your barrier integrity is better if you're getting the right signals from the microbiome. And what that means is that you have better integrity of your gut lining so that you're not getting inflammatory and immune system signals that can interfere with the neurotransmitter signals that we're trying to get to the brain um, if you have something like leaky gut. So if you have leaky gut, you're getting a lot of signaling through the inflammatory cascade and through the immune system that will interfere with the serotonin signaling and dopamine signaling and norepinephrine signaling and things like that. So you'll generally, the result of that will be this sort of general malaise in the body where you feel sort of blah all the time, never quite energetic, never quite happy, never quite motivated. And we can trace a lot of that to sort of, you know, leaky gut kinds of, um, kinds of uh, a signaling. Immune system signaling. People have heard me talk a lot about the importance of the immune system in this whole gut-brain axis. That it's, it, it, the immune system is actually maybe the biggest part of the, of the axis signaling between our two brains, the brain in our head and the brain in our gut. And so we want to get the immune system into a state that we call um, um, optimally primed. This means that your immune system is not just performing as a shield to protect us from bacteria and viruses and cancer cells, but really is also, instead of just being a shield, it's also being a surveillance organ. So it's, it's collecting signals from the gut and sending them to the brain. It's collecting signals from the brain and sending them to the gut. It's collecting signals from the adrenal system and sending that through the rest of the body. So the, the, the immune system really in a certain way is like the Pony Express. And if we can make sure that the signals are being picked up and dropped off the right way and, and the horses are being fed and watered, that's really what we're talking about here is like improving that efficiency across the entire immune system signaling. There's a variety of neuropeptides, neurotransmitters. So the gut, and many people have heard us say this, is the source of most of the neurotransmitters. So your serotonin and your GABA and your dopamine and your norepinephrine and those sorts of things are primarily made in the gut. And so we want to have these, these, these signaling molecules, they don't, they don't just signal the brain, they signal throughout the entire system, um, including, I don't know if people have ever heard me talk about leptin before, but um, leptin is one, of the, is one of the primary appetite signals to the brain. And so if we can get the right signaling of that, that can help people with, you know, with, with, with metabolic issues like, like, like weight loss and things like that. Um, and then vagus nerve activation, obviously. This is one of the main hard wires that go from the brain to the gut. So, so signaling from the gut, there's a lot of these bioactive compounds will signal, will be, will be converted into nervous system uh, signals so that they can get into our other parts of the brain where, where the actual signal can't get to. And that's one of the reasons that it's so important that that axis is redundant signaling, that some of the signals are are, are the short chain fatty acids. Some of these signals are neurotransmitters. Some of these signals are cellular signals like immune system signaling. Some of these signals are nervous impulses that go through the actual wires. And that's because some of these signals need to get across quickly. Some of them can sort of meander their way depending on what signal we're trying to get across. And some of the signals like the serotonin in your gut probably doesn't actually get across into your brain where it has its happiness signal. It probably probably has to be converted a couple of times into other signals until it can get to the brain regions where it actually has its effect. Uh, and we can, we can maybe talk about that another time. So that was a long discussion of what's happening in the gut and how that's and, and that's sending signals throughout the entire rest of the body. But then look at the other side of this slide. Look at the side of the slide over here. There's also signals that are going back to the rest of the body. So, you know, we sh the arrow shows brain to gut and microbiome, but along the way, those signals are being sensed by the rest of the body. They're being sensed by your immune system. They're being sensed by, and you know, everything in revor reverse of what I just said, all those different pieces. So, 
all of the, you know, your thought patterns, your stress levels, your level of sleep, your, your, your social interactions. Um, you know, I, I mean, being outside versus being locked inside all day, all of those kinds of things are being sent down to, to the gut. And the end result in the gut is that certain things happen here, which modulate the ecology of your microbiome, which changes the signals that go back. So you can see where there really is this, this interlocking, overlapping, um, interfering sometimes signaling that just goes around and around and around and around. And if we can get positive signals the whole way around so that they're interacting with each, with, with each other, we're going to get a, a, a wide range of mental wellness benefits and physical health benefits. Okay. Um, I'll come back to this mucus discussion in just a little bit, which is, which is an important piece. So, so how do we do that? We don't do it just through supplements, you know, even though that's our first entry into the world as a company, that's our first product offering, 12 different dietary supplements that are based on these kinds of ideas, that we can do things in the brain, they're gonna have a positive effect throughout the rest of the body. We can do things in the gut, they're gonna have a positive effect throughout the rest of the body. We can do things in this axis, they're gonna have a positive effect throughout the rest of the body. But then we're also, in our ingredient profiles, we're also directly targeting the immune system, we're directly targeting the inflammatory cascade, we're directly targeting your, your baseline nutrition and, 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 and things like that. We're, we're, we're targeting the, the environment of the entire GI tract with products like omega-3s and digestive enzymes and, and, and gut motility enhancers and things like that. We can also do it with our baseline diet, with sort of our background diet. Um, here is sort of our standard American diet. Um, and it just so happens that standard American diet spells out sad because it is sad, right? It is, it is terrible in every single way. And in fact, you know, back in my graduate student days where one of the jobs that I had was trying to get rats to get really fat, really fast, we gave them rat chow that was basically a McDonald's style diet, right? We looked at what it had done in the human population and we said, you know what? That's probably the quickest, fastest, most efficient, cheapest way for us to fatten up these rats um, and then see if we can induce weight loss in them through various ways. Um, but it also, it just so happens that it says sad, by changing their metabolism, it changed their psychology. So eating that way, eating a lot of processed foods, a lot of sugar, a lot of fried, a, a very few uh, uh, whole fruits and vegetables, it, it isn't just sad because it's bad for our health, it's sad because it leads to depression, it leads to anxiety, it leads to higher stress responses, it leads to a variety of those sorts of things. The kind of diet that I like to recommend is a Mediterranean style diet. Sometimes this could be called an Okinawan style diet. These kinds of diets have, have so much great research on them to show, and I'll, I'll talk more about them towards the end of this talk, to show a, a wide range of health benefits, physical health benefits, lower cholesterol, lower heart disease, lower blood pressure, lower Alzheimer's and dementia, lower risk of cancer, um, you, you name it on the physical health side, the data is there. Only just recently have these kind of style diets also been associated with lower depression, lower anxiety, lower stress responses. Um, and, and there's lots and lots of reasons for it, mostly because of everything that I just said about the biochemistry of what's happening in the gut, what's happening in the microbiome, what's happening through the signaling cascade. So you can see the kinds of foods that are there. And I have a, I have a very specific slide for this in just a little bit, but healthy fats, um, uh, lean meats, lots and lots and lots of fruits and vegetables, which are providing lots and lots of fiber. So remember before I said that the most important aspect of our microbiome ecology is to encourage diversity. The most important way to get that to happen is to eat more fiber. So a lot of times, you know, I'll go talk to health professional groups, and I'll talk about microbiome, and sometimes it's mental wellness, sometimes it's physical health, sometimes it's, you know, I, I'm actually gonna be talking about PTSD and depression to a group of veterans on Saturday, on Sunday in Denver. And so there I'm gonna be talking about 
traumatic brain injuries and strokes and you know damage in the brain and things like that but i'm still going to come back to these sort of dietary recommendations and the one thing i want groups to leave with at the end is okay that was all great information what do i do how do i change my diet the absolute best way that you can do it is to eat more fiber and especially eat more soluble fiber it isn't just about getting more you know bran flakes and things like that that's great for certain things but what we want is really the kinds of fiber that are prebiotic fibers that will feed the kind of bacteria in our microbiome that we want for all this healthy signaling so lots of green leafies a lot of beans probably the healthiest food on the entire planet uh, um, oatmeal whole grains uh, apples, uh, grapes, those, those, those sorts of things. And we'll come back to this a little bit. If you're eating more of that style diet, you are generating eubiosis, the opposite of the dysbiosis that, that is caused by some of you know, our stress and our environment, our poor diet and uh, all those sorts of things. One thing that's really, really interesting, and we've, I've talked about this a little bit on an earlier deep dive when I spoke mostly about brain function benefits, is that if you eat this sort of a diet, you have a dysbiotic microbiome. One of the terrible things that happens is a decrease in neuroplasticity. This is um, neuroplasticity is the concept that the brain can change, that we can actually regrow new neurons, even when you're an old guy like me, um, or, or even older, right? We used to think long, long, long time ago, we used to think that once your neurons died, they were dead and they could never come back. And that, that still may be true. But we used to think that you could never regrow neurons. After you were born, once they died, they were gone and you could never regrow no, new ones. Now we know that by enhancing neuroplasticity, we can actually regrow brand new neurons and we can take the ones that are there and encourage them to make new connections. So we can actually physically rewire the brain by, by rewiring the microbiome, right? So changing the ecology of the microbiome can change the way the brain is wired. That is fantastic work because once the brain is rewired in a healthier direction, now it's sending signals throughout the entire rest of the body that are going to have mental wellness benefits and physical health benefits. And some of those are going to help us fight off dysbiosis, right? So the structure of the microbiome, changes the structure of the brain, the structure of the brain changes the structure of the microbiome, and we get into that virtuous cycle again, where it's, it, it's no longer just about functionality of making people feel better. It really now, the new frontier of this is, is, a, is, a, is a new frontier of not just function, but structural changes, right? We can get the functional changes relatively quickly. And this is one of the reasons that, that when people start on fundamentals, they feel better very fast. And what we want people to understand is that if they continue with that, feeling better, feeling better, feeling better, their body is gonna to start to be better in terms of its physicality. And that's gonna engender structural changes that are gonna be um, uh, persistent, more persistent than just a functional change related to biochemistry. So it really, really, like in, in a lot of ways, mind blowing new field of science that's emerging here. Um, so again, you know, just, just, just reemphasizing some of these things that the microbiome is doing, the compounds they're producing and where it's signaling throughout the body. So I showed you some cartoons before. This is just another way of showing that through the stress response system, what we call the HPA axis, um, through, through the brain, through the immune system, through the cardiovascular system. A couple of weeks ago, we did a whole deep dive on this idea of not just a, a, gut brain axis, but also a heart gut brain axis. There's a lot of things that we can do by, by um, rebalancing that dysbiosis and microbiome that have cardiovascular benefits. And those cardiovascular benefits have mood state benefits. So, you know, here's, a, here's another very tight linkage where almost always we see linkages, comorbidity, right? Um, uh, 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 partnering of problems in the brain, like, like stress and depression, with problems in the cardiovascular system, like high blood pressure and heart disease and, and, and strokes and things like that. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a very tight linkage between um, what's happening in the heart and what's happening in the brain. Um, uh, nervous system, um, uh, gastrointestinal tract, 
overall host metabolism, et cetera. So uh, this, this one really gets into the weeds, right? So I'm just gonna point out a couple of things here. Um, if we make specific changes in the gut microbiome, we can have specific changes in the immune system, and that can lead to specific changes. And what I'm showing here is the central nervous system changes, but you'll see that some of those are actually kind of um, uh, systemic body changes at the same time. Let me run you through just a couple of these. So I mentioned before about these short chain fatty acid producers. If we can get more short chain fatty acids produced, we can have a, a direct anti-inflammatory effect throughout the body. That's going to be great for the brain. If we can get the brain less inflamed, we can directly reduce one of the absolute major causes of depression. Right? People who are depressed have neuroinflammation. And if we can get that down directly, that's awesome, fixing it in the brain. If we can get it down indirectly by fixing the inflammation in the gut, that's a, that's a, that's a wonderful, awesome thing. Um, how about this one? Let me, and I'm going to go backwards this time. I'm going to go in a reverse direction. Social communication. Um, so this is, this is looking specifically at autism spectrum disorders. Um, and if you can get, get that, that dysbiosis back to a state of eubiosis, you can actually have a wide range of behavioral changes. And, you know, I, I'm not saying that to say that we can, we can treat autism. That isn't the reason for it. We did a whole deep dive on behavioral changes, um, you know, and, and, you know, autism is a, is a, is a wonderful model for, for exploring some of those changes. ADD is one, pandas is one. Um, but even if you're sort of a, in a normal state, and you take your microbiome from a slightly dysbiotic state to a, to, a, to a better state, a more balanced eubiotic state. People are saying to us now, just with the fundamentals, that they're feeling more centered, that they're feeling more present, that they're feeling things like people will say that their self-esteem is better. And I, and I almost hesitate to talk about th those kinds of things in front of an audience because as a scientist, it's difficult for me to quantify that. When we look at psychological outcomes like depression and anxiety and burnout and vigor and things like that, there are standardized scales that I can use in clinical trials to show somebody, look, your, your, your depression indices are down by 60% or your vigor indices are up by 40%, right? We have, we have scales where we can quantify that sort of stuff. When people say they feel more socially connected or they feel that their self-esteem is better or they feel like their 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 emotional intelligence has been improved by being on these kinds of products these gut brain access products for a short period of time that is awesome and i love people to talk about it and try to try to try to explain what they're feeling to other people but it's difficult for me because i can't put a graph up behind me on the on the on the presentation it's hard for me to actually you know, uh, quantify it in certain ways, but certainly seems to be there because we're hearing about it more and more and more. And we can just go down the, down the, down the list. Um, certain probiotics have been associated, not just with, with, with those functional benefits, but remember I said these actual neuroplasticity benefits, neurogenesis, right? Actually making more neurons and improving the connections between the neurons that are there and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can see, you can see some of the benefits here, but this is, this is this is new, very very new stuff that we're that that we as a company are already harnessing to build into our products and build into our whole platform, so that we can bring people to not just feeling better but being better in certain ways. It really has gotten us to think of this whole area as a as a as an ecological view of health and disease, right? That it's not just one thing. I think, thankfully, we're finally starting to pass out of the, the era of synthetic pharmaceutical thinking, uh, at least in certain domains, where it was, here's the problem, here's the drug, the synthetic chemical that treats that problem, right? The, 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 those, those days, I hope, are, are starting to fade away, because really, when we're looking at modern Dis disbalances, modern uh, diseases, 
it really is a lot of things. It's our diet, which I've talked about a little bit. It's the things that are coming from our mind. I mean, so it's what we're feeding our bodies. It's what we're feeding our minds. It's our thought patterns and our signaling patterns. And those are both just signals in the body. Um, it, it's, it's our life experiences. It's our genetics certainly interact here. And our microbiome controls a lot of what happens in our genetic profile through a process that we call epigenetics. So don't, don't get freaked out. It's not like the bacteria are changing your genetic profile, but the bacteria are absolutely changing the epigenetics, which basically means what genes are turned off and what genes are turned on. The, 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 um, the, the translation of those genes. The environment has a big effect on that. Our lifestyle choices also. And our social connectedness. One of the reasons that I, that I love to talk about Mediterranean diet isn't just because of the biochemistry of the active ingredients, like the flavonoids and the omega-3s and things like that. Part of it is that social connectedness. So um, I have a, this is a quick little short story that has nothing to do with science. Um, in my neighborhood here where I live, I'm part of a little dinner group. So we travel around to each other's houses. Once a month, somebody hosts a dinner and somebody cooks the dinner and everybody comes over and enjoys it. And it's wonderful social convivial atmosphere. And when we do it next month, or maybe it's this month, I got to figure out when that is because I have to get my menu together. Um, we're doing a Mediterranean style one because at these dinners, I always talk about this kind of stuff because this is the kind of work that I do. But instead of myself and my wife just making it and having everybody come over and eat it, that would give good health on a certain level. But a better level would be to have everybody come over and help us cook help us put it together. We're, we're, we'll tell people, this is what you're bringing, this is what your job is when you get to the kitchen. And so part of that social connectedness of making the meal together um, and enjoying that, that social connectedness of, of, of helping each other and being around each other and laughing and telling jokes and all that kind of stuff, and then enjoying the bioactivity of that, that's the, that's the, the, the crux of what we're trying to do here. The, the signals from the brain, the signals from the gut, the signals as we digest those foods and deliver them out to the different parts of the body, that's what the new idea of thinking is. It really is this idea of complete physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, social well-being. And we can't deliver all that in a dietary supplement. There's certain things that we can do, and there's, you know, biochemically to give a psychological outcome, but there's other things that we have to deliver through programs and through meetups and through mindfulness and through getting the right sleep and through getting people to perceive their world in, in the right way and help others to do the same. I mean, that's what Amari is all about. It really is about this bringing this entire ecosystem to the world in a way that is comprehensive and holistic and easy to do and easy to share with somebody else. That's, that's the promise of this, of this, of this new thinking. Um, yeah, so, so here's what a Mediterranean diet looks like in sort of pyramid fashion, right? So the base of the pyramid means the, the big things, the things that you want to include at the most predominant levels. And then as it goes up the pyramid, you're getting less and less and less and less. So you can see at the tippity top of the pyramid, we're not telling you that you have to eat vegan. We're telling you that, that especially red meats and sweets, these are not banned, but they're at the top of the period meeting where we're, we're, we're consuming them less often. Poultry, eggs, cheese, and yogurt, we're consuming them on a, on a, on a fairly regular basis, but they're, we're consuming them less than these sorts of protein choices. Fish and seafood, and especially fatty fish, whenever we can choose them, I'll say to people sometimes, you know, do you eat fish? And they go, oh yeah, I love fish sticks. And I'll just go, oh no, not that. You don't want fish sticks. That's almost the worst choice that you can make. Um, or they'll say, oh yeah, I love, a, I love to have a piece of uh, tilapia or I love to have flounder. Or I love to have scrod or something like that. People love white fish and they love white fish because it doesn't taste like fish. Um, the fish that is the most fishy is fishy because it has, it's really high in omega-3. So tuna is sometimes the one fish that people will eat that is a really good high fat fish. Salmon is another really good one. Uh, mackerel, sardines, anchovies, those sorts of things. And as soon as I start naming off some of those really fatty fish, people will make a face and they'll go, mm, 
not interested, which is then when I say, well, then you have to take a fish oil and you have to take a couple of grams of fish oil every single day in order to get the anti-inflammatory effects in the gut, in the brain, throughout your system that is going to help with some of that signaling, mental wellness benefits, physical health benefits. But the big part of the dietary portion of the, of the pyramid are those Fibers I was talking about before. Look at all the wonderfulness here. Um, you've got you've got onions, you've got leeks, you've got garlic, you've got uh, you've got green leafies, you've got grapes, you've got pomegranates, you've got you've got beans, you've got oatmeal, you've got plenty of bread, right? But the bread is whole grain bread. It's not wonder bread. It's not brown bread that is low in fiber. One of the key things you can do with your bread is when you, when you buy it at the store, look on the back of the label and see how many grams of fiber. You want five or more per slice. Um, that, you know, the more whole you can eat, the better. And then look at all this wonderful stuff down at the bottom. Physical activity, enjoying meals with others, having that social connection like I talked about before, all really, really important. Um, so I mentioned this already, but I wanted to bullet point it out for everybody. Um, up until just recently, the Mediterranean diet was really viewed as a cardiovascular diet. That's where the real good early research came in. Populations that eat this way live the longest, have the lowest levels of heart disease and stroke and high blood pressure and those sorts of things. So for a lot of years, Mediterranean diet way of eating was a physical health benefit. It was really for cardiovascular disease. Then there were studies that came out that showed that it reduced the risk of cancer, reduced the risk of metabolic syndrome like obesity and diabetes. Um, and then the, the, the brain studies started coming out. Um, people who eat more towards that side of eating have less Alzheimer's, they have less dementia, they have better um, uh, mental faculties as they age. You know, you, you go to some of these parts of the world, whether it's Okinawa, you know, southern part of Japan, uh, Sardinia, southern part of Italy, um, you know, lots of uh, 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 southern parts of, 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 of Greece who, who are eating in these styles. Um, even, even, um, some of, the, some of the Scandinavian diets follow very similar patterns to what we call a Mediterranean diet. So that dietary pattern in Finland and in Norway, those people live a long time um, and they live a, a, good, a good number of years with most of those years being very healthy and being vibrant. You know? So it's not just longevity, it's about making sure that your life span has a long health span associated with it. But just in the last couple of years, we've started to see studies come out around depression. Actually being able to take people with major depressive disorder and give them a Mediterranean style diet, sometimes supplemented with extra fish oil so that you're really getting that anti-inflammatory effect through the body. Um, and at, at the end of eight weeks or 12 weeks, depending on the intervention, most of those people are no longer diagnosable as having major depressive disorder, right? That is pew, that we can use a dietary intervention like that to actually change the course of a disease that many of these pharmaceutical interventions can't even touch in a meaningful way, right? It's really, really great stuff. And so from that kind of research, we're able to build, a, a, build an intervention. We're able to build a product line that really incorporates as many of those aspects as possible. So Mediterranean diet we know now is good for your gut microbiomes. These are data that we've only just learned in the last five years. Um, and it, it really comes down to a couple of the main bioactive components that we can isolate. So I am a food first nutritionist, right? I want people to, to eat that Mediterranean diet every single day as much as possible. But I, can, I, can, I can't see you guys right now, but I can hear your eyes rolling, um, that, that that is not doable for most people on most days. And I'm right there with you. I just, I mean, I got off an airplane about an hour ago, got home, got my slides together, and here we are together, right? So I haven't even, haven't even eaten dinner. I ate lunch in the airport in Minneapolis, and I sure as heck didn't eat the Mediterranean diet when I was in the airport, right? So I get it that the lives that we lead 
don't lend themselves to this kind of thing, which is exactly where supplements fall in, right? I would love, you know, so uh, tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to be on another airplane. I was just about to say tomorrow I'll be home, so I'll be able to make my Mediterranean style eating. Um, we can't do it all the time. So when we can't, that's where the supplements fall in. But if you can formulate the supplements along these kinds of lines so that we're getting the right food for the brain, the right food for the microbiome, the right food for the immune system and the inflammatory cascade in between there, that axis, and use the, the, the right omega-3 nutrients, use the right strains of probiotics, use the right prebiotics to feed them, use the right antioxidants and polyphenols um, and, and, and herbal extracts that we would normally find in those diets, not to replace those diets, but to, to, but to serve as that sort of stop gap for when you can't eat those rich diets, that's what, that's what we're trying to do here. And that's why our product line Oh, and social interactions. And, that, and, that's, and that's why last night I was in Milwaukee doing a wonderful social interaction meeting. And uh, in the next couple of days, I'll be in Denver doing some other ones. This is why we have a line of 12 products. You can't cram all of everything that I just said over the last however long I've been talking, 49 minutes. Um, you can't cram all of that into one product. And that's why we've got 12 products that let you customize your regimen no matter where you are on that mental wellness continuum. So whether it's the gut-brain axis solution in the form of our fundamentals, whether it's these targeted solutions that we have in our Menta Therapeutics line, or whether it's the foundational nutrition that you find across our Menta Essentials line, it really gives people the opportunity to say, you know what, I'm not getting enough of those antioxidant, anti-inflammatory phytonutrients to protect my neurons, I'm going to start taking Vita GBX. I'm not getting enough of those specific targeted probiotic prebiotics. I'm going to take mentabiotics or I'm going to take probiotics. I'm not getting enough of the, you know, you fill in the blank, uh, omega-3s and fish oil in my diet. I'm going to take the, the Omega product, right? So it really gives people the opportunity to customize wherever they are. And the thing that I'm just loving about not just the science, but being out there at these meetings and explaining the science, but then talking to people as I get to hear every single week when we're traveling around the country for this launch tour, I get to hear about the physical benefits. I get to hear about people coming up and saying, my digestive function is much better. My joint function is much better. My energy levels are much better. My skin, and now it's you know the beginning of spring, so it's allergy season, and people aren't complaining as much about those sort of symptoms, right? It's wonderful to see that. And the reason we wanna do this call tonight is, to, this is mental health month. To, this is May is Mental Health Month, and you're going to be hearing a lot in, in many channels, nightly news, articles, Facebook posts, you know, all sorts of things about everything that we can do from a mental health perspective. But once we solve that for people, we get these physical health benefits, and it's wonderful to see, and now you guys all have an appreciation, I hope, for some of the underlying biochemistry and physiology of why. Why is it that my elbow doesn't hurt anymore? Why is it that my skin is better? Why is it that my nose isn't stuffy when it should be when the, when the leaves are sprouting and things like that? So uh, it, it, it's, it, it's wonderful that that is not it's not what we're promising to everybody, but we're promising that mental wellness benefit. That's, again, that's the, that's the point of our spear, and that's always going to be what we're doing at Amare. But as, a, as, a, as sort of a cascade ripple effect of that, we're going to be helping people's health in multiple, multiple ways around, around the entire globe. And that's a wonderful place to be. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen right here and go back to here. So hopefully you guys can see me again. And I'm gonna, I don't see anything in the chat room. There, nobody's typed in any questions, which is unusual, which is fine. Maybe, maybe I just uh, overwhelmed everybody with all the gobbledygook I was talking about. But we, we've still got some time. It's only, uh, it's 7.54 here in, no it isn't, yes it is, in, uh, in, in Utah. Um, I'd be happy to answer some questions. If anybody wants to unmute themselves and, and while you're doing that, I do have one up here. I'd like to know how this product helps with schizophrenia. So would I. That it, it's hard to say. Schizophrenia is one of the really, really tough ones. Um, let me let me let me let me broaden your question a little bit. Um, 
schizophrenia, epilepsy, um, uh, some, so, sometimes autism, there, there, there are a lot of kind of um, neurological problems that are very hard to get help with, right? They're very hard to resolve because we don't really know what causes the problem. Um, it, you know, as a nutritional biochemist, one of the things I love is I can say to somebody, what are your symptoms? Aha, those symptoms are chiefly caused by this dysfunction in the body, this imbalance, biochemical imbalance. And if we rebalance that, we're gonna get an effect on, on, your, on your symptoms, right? The ones that I just rattled off, including schizophrenia, we don't even know what that dysfunction is. We don't know where the imbalance is. It could be one of a zillion different things. And that makes it really challenging to, to give people a lot of help with. So a lot of times I have to kind of, you know, kick the can a little bit and, and punt and say, we don't really know, but there's not a problem with somebody rebalancing their gut microbiome. There's not a problem with their improving the, the, the signaling through their gut brain axis, right? Those are going to be good things in and of themselves whether or not they're going to have an effect on that problem that we're talking about is kind of a question mark, you know? So that's, that's, you know, that's not sometimes the answer people are looking for, but that's the best that we can do sometimes. Um, have people had improvements with acne on the fundamentals? Yeah. Lots of people have. And I, I would even say this. Um, yeah. My office door is closed. Um, my teenage son is actually getting great results on his own acne with a combination of the fundamentals, but adding probiotic and omega, right? Because think about what acne is. Acne is an inflammatory condition on your skin. Um, there, are so, there are even some products on the market, and we may go into this someday, that have probiotics in their topicals. What we can do right now with the, with the product line that we have is we can treat that, that, that topical inflammatory response by coming at it from an internal perspective. And so he, he's great, he's 16 years old. Every morning he wakes up and he, he, he has trouble swallowing pills. So he mixes his stuff into almond milk and shoots it right down because he's seeing a benefit on his skin. And think about why. Why in the world could probiotics, which work way down here in your gut, have an effect way up here on your chin or your, the, the zit on your nose? It's because that inflammatory process is really governed by an inflammatory process that's systemic through the body. And that inflammatory process is governed by your immune system, which, which directs the inflammatory process. And that immune system is orchestrated by your microbiome. Right. So, you know, we we go down the chain of events here. We go down that dominoes game and we affect the, the, the root cause as much as we can. We rebalance that, which rebalances that, which rebalances that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I, I, it looks like we've got a cascade of questions now. So um, let me see if a person eats kefir. Will that upset or change what we are wanting to change with the supplements? No, that's wonderful. My refrigerator's full of kefir. And if people ever see the, the, the TV segments that I do around the country, I always have, you know, I'll have kefir, I'll have yogurt, I'll have kombucha. Um, sometimes if I can find it, depending on what city I'm in, if I can get some nice fresh sauerkraut uh, or kimchi, depending on the city that I'm in, all of those fermented foods are wonderful. Um, and um, I didn't point them out specifically, but they are part of the Mediterranean diet and the Okinawan diet and the Scandinavian diet and all of those sort of longevity diets. Those fermented foods are absolutely fantastic with one caution. Um, they are sort of general spectrum, good for you, general health benefits. Uh, they're not going to be targeted therapies like what we can do with the supplements where we can say, you know what, we want a specific strain of probiotic bacteria to help with depression or anxiety or stress or, or that kind of thing, right? It's really good sort of baseline. I probably eat a fermented thing every single day. Uh, whether it's kefir or yogurt or, or you know, some, some, something else. Um, so yeah, absolutely, absolutely keep doing that. But don't stop there, right? One of the things I don't like people, I, I don't like to hear from people is when they say, oh yeah, you guys have probiotics and prebiotics and microbiome and gut brain access. Yeah, I'm already doing that because I eat yogurt, 
right? That, that, that's, they're, they're completely missing the point, right? It's wonderful that they're doing that, but now we need to go to the, the next level of science and get very strategic and very targeted with the microbiome modulation that we're trying to do. Okay, so let me just answer a couple more and then we're gonna wrap it up because we're at the top of the hour. Um, do any of the products have magnesium in them? Um, kind of, um, our Vita GBX has a little bit of magnesium and a little bit of calcium, but magnesium is one of those things that can have a wonderful um, kind of de-stressing effect throughout the entire nervous system. Um, and magnesium is sometimes a supplement that I recommend at even higher levels than what we have um, in our Vita GBX product. Um, so we have some, but certain higher levels could be beneficial for other, other sort of mental wellness, physical health benefits. Um, and hint, hint, you might, you might see some more magnesium coming from us in, in a future, future product offering. Um, you have touch base on depression, but do you know how it helps with someone with bipolar? Um, for, for, for that one, you know, I would actually say it helps in similar ways. So all of these mental wellness issues, what we want to do is kind of reframe depression, anxiety, bipolar, those labels, those disease labels that are sometimes given to them, they really share a lot of the same biochemical bacterial disruptions that I just talked about on this call. But I did a deep dive specifically about each of these issues. Um, so if you, go, if you go to zoomwithpat.com and page down to where it says deep dives and then click on that button, you'll get to a list of the deep dives and one of them is specifically about these mood state issues where I really go into a lot of the details. Um, some of the same things that we're doing will have benefits across that whole spectrum of those sort of uh, you know, low on the mental wellness continuum states. All right, let me quickly, let me quickly do these ones. Um, oh, they keep coming. Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, and there's where the deep dives are. Michael just put in, uh, Michael just put in the link to where people can go for the deep dives. Um, why is there sugar in the mentabiotics? I answer this question all the time. Um, we have it in the mentabiotics because it makes the product palatable. Yeah, I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, um, if we didn't have it, you would spit it out. It, it's that bitter and it's that organic tasting. Um, so, so that's why it's there. Um, and, and, and we actually make no apologies for it because uh, for us to use some of the other sweetener profiles, um, at least in the first iterations that we did, it made it worse. So, you know, people have said to me, you should try stevia. Well, we actually have some stevia in there. If we do only stevia, it makes the bitterness worse. Or you should try monk fruit, or you should try maple syrup, or you should try, I mean, there's a zillion ways we can flavor things. We have tried lots and lots of them, and we continue to try other ones. There's different ways that we can actually mill some of the bioactives so we maintain the bioactivity but we change their flavor profile so we're continuing along some of that so we can you know who knows maybe someday we'll be able to get to a, a sugar-free version um but you know the jury is still out on that what do i think of the keto diet well you just heard me wax poetically about mediterranean style diets i'm not so that's what i really like um and i really like that because of the research the research on keto is okay. Um, I don't think it's a long-term strategy for most people. I actually do like keto uh, if you need a jump start to your weight loss. Um, keto, for people who don't know, is uh, the reason it's called keto is because you eat very, very low carbohydrates. And by doing so, it puts your body into a state called ketosis, where it encourages fat metabolism. Um, it can, it, 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 it's, it's very difficult to stay on that low level of carbohydrate uh, intake, less than 50 grams and even less than 25 grams for some people. It basically means you can't eat carbohydrates, you can't eat fruit, you can barely eat vegetables on a, on a keto diet. Um, when you're up around the 50 grams, you can eat some vegetables, but it's the thing that you're missing is you're missing the kinds of high fiber foods that feed the kind of microbiome that we're trying to grow that give all of these wonderful mental wellness and physical health benefits. So keto is putting you into a point where you're not feeding and tending and nourishing the kind of diverse microbiome that we're finding is associated with all these health benefits. So, you know, we could, we could, maybe, we could maybe talk about keto more when we talk about metabolism that we're gonna do a whole deep dive on. Um, 
Can individuals with depression who are on medication for depression take fundamentals and or the mood supplement? Yeah, there's thousands of people out there right now who are doing it. And what we tell them is that we're in a good place with our ingredient profiles in that none of our ingredients across our product line really interact with or interfere with medication regimens. But where we are is that once you see any of the products across our line and the balancing effects that they have, what they'll very generally do is that as somebody gets from a state of imbalance to a state of better balance, they feel better. And when they're in that state of better balance, now they can go back to their doctor and say, hey doc, maybe I'm over medicated now. Maybe if I'm taking a high dose of this depression medicine, maybe now that I'm feeling better because my body is balanced in all these different ways, maybe that high dose antidepressant drug can now become a medium dose or a low dose or a zero dose. Or if I'm taking a, a cocktail of different antidepressants, anti-anxiety kinds of medications, maybe we can drop one out. Maybe we can drop two out. Maybe we can drop them all out, or maybe we can start weaning them off. But that's something, that's a discussion people need to have with their own healthcare provider. And we, and we recommend people do that all the time. Um, and then last one, um, uh, oh, somebody was just saying that I, that I answer the, the, the common question. So there's lots of places that people can go to get their questions answered. Uh, in fact, Michael, Michael, wave to everybody. Say hi. Michael, hey everybody. Michael next month is going to officially be full-time part of the product development team. And he's really going to be involved in helping to field some of the questions, helping to um, get people to understand where they can get their questions answered, where they can get information, how they can share information, how we can really make education a big part about what we're doing at Amara. Because this is, a, this is all new stuff, right? We're really breaking ground with what we're doing. We're taking the very latest science, like literally out of the laboratories and bringing it to the mainstream. And this is the perfect place to do it in direct sales, in network marketing. That's where you have the opportunity to tell that story and have that educational moment. So people understand why we're doing things the way we're doing them and how this new science can really help them in their, in their lives every day. So with that, I really appreciate you guys being on the call tonight. Uh, this has been recorded. I'm going to go down here and stop the recording and